Right, this is it. The episode that must not be named. Um, I wanted to carry it on my science series for quite a while, but when I thought about the episodes that I wanted to do, I felt like I couldn't handle the aggro from the one that was about to, you know, come up next, which was evolution. I've, I've t sort of titled it sort of giraffe sex because I do go into that a little bit. Um, but that's to sort of keep away the hardcore crazies who, who pounce on every evolution video um, from all over the place. Um, so here it is. This is the episode that brings stupidity. Today we're going to talk about, you know, evolution. Um, and one thing I wanted to say to you guys is that remember that the people on the other end of the end of the comments are, you know, people. They believe what they're saying and what you think sounds ridiculous to them. OK, so that goes for both sides. I'm not taking sides here. Well, I am, but eh. so I'm not going to read the comments on this one. Um, just, so just be respectful to each other. It doesn't take much um, to be human beings about it. So thank you. Respect. Right. So the first thing we need to talk about is what mutation is. And we know what mutation is. Those people who have like web toes or snakes with two heads. And in some cases, there are even cows that have, you know, extra legs. OK, those things are mutations. Now, that happens when the genes of a living organism um, are not quite right. So the DNA is a bit iffy, as it were. And these aren't genes, by the way. These are base pairs, but you all know the DNA strand by now. Um, now, most of the time, these mutations are complete bulls, and in the wild, they'll die. In fact, those two-headed snakes, um, they tend to eat each other. At least one head will eat the other head, which also leaves it a bit bleh and open for disease. Um, but sometimes, those mutations work, and the animal gets a huge boost. Um, like, say, you mutated the gene for psychic powers and can levitate a tree or the ability to run faster than a speeding bullet, or an enormous stick that gets you laid all the time. You know, huge boost, evolutionary speaking. Sadly, most of the mutations will kill you outright, cause you pain, give you cancer, and you'll die. Um, but, you know, here's hoping for the penis gene. Right, so now those genes that you have that are, are now mutated, that are good, make you fit for your environment. Um, we measure that in how likely you are to get laid and make babies and survive that process. Um, because if you fit in your environment, if it works, then you'll live to have babies. I mean, look at all you guys. You're really unbelievably lucky. Every single one of your ancestors, going through the hominids, the apes, through rodents, fish, and every single celled creature, every single one of those ancestors survived to make a baby. OK, are you aware how incredibly rare that is? They weren't gobbled up by a bigger predator. They weren't murdered. They didn't die of congenital heart failure. You have a lineage that is going back millions of years. You are the product of supreme good luck. One fishy chomp before it's time and you wouldn't be here. You want to talk about amazing things? You want to talk about miracles? Think about that. Millions of generations all to make you like you're on some giant roller coaster going to a certain point, like a giant Rube Goldberg machine. OK, so today I'm going to use, as is um, said in the top, something about giraffes. Now, the reason why I'm using giraffes is because somebody said to me that eleven evolution wasn't true because um, I don't think giraffes could have evolved because they would have starved before evolution could happen. Now. <laughs> that statement made me laugh and batter my head against the keyboard in frustration. And if you actually take part in this debate, you'll do that a lot. Um, so I just got a new keyboard, so I won't take part in that debate. But if you want to see both sides um, and the stupidity that goes on, just take a look in the comments below. I'm sure they're there already. 
So giraffes. We have some fossils of things that look really giraffe-like, except they only had a short neck. Now there were two scientists who had very different ideas about how this came to pass. Um, one was a dude called Lamarck, and the other was everyone's favourite chew toy, Charles Darwin. Now, um, Lamarck thought that the way giraffes got long necks was that one giraffe, a singular giraffe, saw some nummy leaves way, way up high and stretched its neck way, way up and got the leaves and it stretched its neck permanently. It could then pass on its changed genetic information onto its babies and ta-da, long neck giraffes. So um, by that logic, I could stick you on a rack, give you a bit of a stretch, you know, dislocate your arms, and then you can have babies who would inherit your new super tallness and you can become the next shack, for example. Um, <laughs> for all you aspiring basketball players out there, genetics don't work like that. If you're short, the chances are good that your kids are going to be short no matter how much stretching you do. Now Darwin's theory was based on this stuff called variation. You know how some people are tall and others really, really short and there are every height in between? That's because our genes aren't identical. Um, Darwin actually didn't know about genes, but we know about them now and actually they confirm his ideas and they make it a lot more sensible as to what he was saying because now we have evidence for it. Anyway, everyone has these tiny differences and so do giraffes. However, I'm not a giraffe expert and if you ask me, I probably couldn't see a difference in a giraffe, but giraffe experts assure me that they're there. Right, so now we have three proto-giraffes. Short ass, medium, and sort of taller, all based on their necks. So their necks are different sizes. Um, short ass can eat the leaves down here. Medium can eat the leaves here and here. Tall boy can eat the leaves that are here, here, and here. Now, tall giraffe won't just eat leaves where he can reach, but he'll eat all the others as well, for you see he is an evil giraffe and he wants the others to starve. Except that doesn't happen, they're not evil giraffes, they just like food, like all of us. Um, so, shorty giraffe doesn't get all the food that they need. So, crazy mountain cat can chase them down and nom their faces. Um, they're not like your ancestors, they died before they had babies. This means that only longer neck giraffes are the only ones that have the babies, so that the only genes that can get passed on are the long-necked ones. Right, so since the only genes are the long-necked genes, I love that word, I don't know why, maybe because it sounds like naked, I don't know. Anyway, um, in the next generation, the genes are going to be, the giraffe's necks are going to have that same variation where there's one slightly shorter, one slightly bigger, one slightly bigger than that, and the same thing's going to happen. But because the only genes that have survived are the long neck, um, the long neck genes, um, the necks are just naturally going to be slightly taller than the other generation. Um, and so the necks are going to get taller and taller. And the taller ones are the ones that survive because there are all other pressures about the environment, um, making trees taller and grasslands appear, and that's a whole other kettle of fish. But because they're own, only the genes that the only animals that survived were the long-necked ones. The only genes that are around are the long-necked ones. And because those ones tend to survive better, they're more fit for their environment or fit, fit for survival, those are the ones that are going to set survive. And the short asses are going to die out. Um, that's all evolution is. Differences or variations between individuals becoming more pronounced because the animals are better fitted to their environment. So they tend to survive, so they pass on the genes. That's it. Now people are going to say, we can't prove this because we can't see it happening. Well, that's not true, because Darwin's finches, where it all set out, have been studied. And they've seen this happen in the last 20 years, and they've got an article linked in the thing below. Yeah? Um, <clears throat> so, to sum up, um, evolution, true. Um, now, did humans evolve from apes? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes, and there is evidence. 
uh, lots and lots and lots of evidence. Now, if you do now, there are people going to be who are disproving this, and they're going to say, "Well, because this happens, that means evolution's not true." Um, if you disprove one bit of the evolution evolutionary legacy, it doesn't fall like a house of cards. Neither does God, by the way. If you just prove one bit about God, doesn't make him not true in your eyes. You know, that's faith. Um, so whatever you believe that to be either. Um, this is an infinitely complex and wonderful world. And there are people in it who believe all kinds of things. Um, so I'm going to leave you now with this idea that you should be kind to each other. It doesn't matter what you believe. You're not going to force anyone to change their beliefs. So just say the truth as you see it. It's not OK to lie. I'm going to say that now. It's not OK to lie for God. It's not OK to lie for evolution. OK, be honest. And if you're honest, the truth will come out.